Okay, this sermon's entitled, 40 Things That Take Place at the Moment of Salvation. Number one, we are foreknown. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, Romans 8, 29. See also 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Number two, elect, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Predestinated is number three, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Number four, we're chosen, for many are called, but few are chosen, Matthew 22, 17, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Five, we're called. Faithful is he that calleth you, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. Number two, we're, recon okay, we're, we're reconciled. This is the sixth thing. Reconciled by God, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. We're reconciled to God, much more being reconciled to God, Romans 5.10, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Okay, we're redeem redeemed, redeemed by God, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1.14. Um, we are redeemed out of all condemnation, Romans 8.1, for there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Okay, we are related to God through a propitiation. And he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, 1 John 2, 2. Now, I went over a lot of these things that, you know, the foreknowledge and predestination and the election, that has nothing to do with Calvinism and all that garbage, where they say you have no choice, and God does it all. God does it all, but you know what? We have a, respons we have a responsibility, and that is it's called faith. Because Bob makes it very clear, there are some that will not re that will not receive God, will not receive Christ. It's on them. So I wanted to go ahead and clear that up because I'm I'm using some words that you know the Calvinists may use, but they take these doctrines um out of context and they take the you know the, de the definition of words out of context. So um, all our sins are covered by the atoning blood. That's another thing that takes place. Okay, First Peter chap First Peter chapter two verse twenty four, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree. Okay, finally, I'm not going to tell you what, which number we're on because I've already gotten the, the um, I, don't, I don't have them enumerated. I just have them li listed out. We're crucified with Christ, the Bible says in Romans 6, 6, and also in uh, Galatians chapter 2. It says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but with Christ that liveth in me. You, you're going to have to look at that on your own. We are dead with Christ, uh, positionally. Buried with him, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, Romans 6, 4, Colossians 2, 12. We are raised with Christ to walk by a new, a new life principle. That's Romans, uh, that's Colossians 3, 1. Okay, we're delivered from the law, Romans 7, 6. We're children of God, born again. Ye must be born again, John 3, 7. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You know, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, whosoever believeth that Jesus, is, that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That's a simple salvation verse. Okay, we're, we're regenerated. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, we're adopted, placed as adult sons into the body of Christ. Ye have received the spirit of adoption, Romans chapter 8, verse 15, Romans 8, 23. Um, a future adoption, even though it, it's declared to us the, mo the moment we believe on Christ. We're acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay? Where is that found? That's found in um, Romans 3. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians uh, 1, verse 30. It talks about... Uh, we're made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ, and to all them them that believe, that's Romans 3, 20, 22, and, and beyond, and, and that portion of Scripture. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and Philippians 3, 9, we, we get imputed righteousness. Okay, we are sanctified positionally. Okay? For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's a one-time one -time deal happens at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone it's positional sanctification that's not to be confused with progressive sanctification and the people that, that confuse those two are Catholics and they're just a bunch of false teachers they, they want to they want to 
confuse justification with sanctification. They want to link them together. They, they're, they're, they can't be linked because justification is, is by faith alone. Anyway, let's, let me move on to the next point. I'm kind of deviating. We're made accepted in the Beloved, Ephesians 1, 6. We are made meet. Uh, that's uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. We're justified by we're justified by faith alone, Romans five one. Therefore we can therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're forgiven all trespasses. Okay, Colossians one fourteen two thirteen three thirteen Ephesians one seven Ephesians four thirty it talks about having all your sins forgiven. Now a, a distinction is necessary here between the complete and abiding judicial forgiveness and the oft-repeated forgiveness within the family of God. 1 John 1, 9 is experiential forgiveness and cleansing. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 is forensic, judicial forgiveness. All sins, you're forgiven. We're made nigh in Christ Jesus, who sometimes we're, a, we're, we're far off. Okay, We're made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. We're delivered from the powers of darkness. Colossians 1, 13. We're translated into the kingdom, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. We are on the rock, Christ, we are on the rock, Christ Jesus. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. We are a gift from God to Christ. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine are they, and thou gavest them me. John chapter 17, verse 6, verse 11, verse 12, verse 20, and then of course John 10, 29. We're circumcised in Christ, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Colossians 2, 11, Philippians 3, 3, Romans 2, 29. Now, I'm going pretty fast, so you might want to have a a pad of paper on you so you can write down some of these references and then look them up on your own. Partakers of the holy and royal priesthood. That's another thing that happens. We become partakers of the holy and royal priesthood. Um, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. We're a royal priesthood. Okay, that's found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. We're a chosen generation and a peculiar people. But ye are a chosen generation, a peculiar people. Titus 2.14, 1 Peter 2.9. We, we, have, we have access to God, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. We are within the much more care of God, Romans 5.9. We are objects of his love, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Okay? We are... Saved by grace, you know, Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith. I mean, I'm telling you all that these are the different things that happen the moment a person believes on Christ for eternal life. All these things happen, okay, at the same time, simultaneously and instantaneously. And none of them can be reversed. That means you're eternally secure, period. Okay? We are <clears throat> objects of his power, Okay, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, Philippians 2, 13. We are objects of his faithfulness. You know, for he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, 5. We are objects of his peace. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which ye are called in one body. Colossians 3, 15. We are objects of his consolation, our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. Great verse. Okay, objects of his intercession, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hebrews 7.25 We are his inheritance, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Ephesians 1.18 If you really just dig through the book of Ephesians, you're going you're gonna to come across so many of these promises of God, it's not even funny. The first three chapters go over a lot of this, and in Colossians as well. Okay, we are... <clears throat> We are an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. We are a heavenly association. Ephesians 2, 6. Partners with Christ in life, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Colossians 3, 
verse 4, 1 John 5, 11 and 12, except, you know, he that hath the Son hath life, but he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. We are partners with Christ in position and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. We are partners with Christ in service. God is faithful by whom ye were called into fellowship, or rather parenthetically speaking, partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 talks about God, God being faithful. We are workers together with God, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, and we are ambassadors of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Ministers of God, 2 Corinthians 6, 4. Okay, we are partners with Christ in suffering. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Okay, we are partners with Christ in be, 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 uh, betrothal. Okay, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. Or betrothal, betrothal, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Okay, we are heavenly citizens, for our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. All these things take place at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone. And they, they promise us we're going to heaven. Okay, we are of the family and household of God, fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, Galatians 6, 10. We are light in the Lord. Now ye are ye are light in the Lord. Ephesians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. All these things are, are declared to us. They're not, they can't be changed. They're declaratives. They're, they're, they're what the Bible says about us. We are, we are a member in his body. We are a branch in the vine. John 15, 5. We are a stone in the building. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. We're a sheep in his flock, John 10, 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And, no, and <clears throat> neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. They are born of the Spirit. They are baptized with the Spirit. They are born again. They are indwelt by the Spirit. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and, and ye are not of your own. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 John 7, 39, Romans 5, 5, Romans 8, 9, 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, Galatians 4, 6, 1 John 3, 24. We are sealed by the Spirit, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. We are glorified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. We are complete in him, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, Colossians 2, 10. We are possessing every spiritual blessing. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly in Christ. Okay? Such is the work which is now fully accomplished in and for the, low, the lowliest sinner who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is all superhuman and God alone could do it. Nay, if man could, e could even have any part in that work, it would be at the point... Of con it, would, it would be at that point of contact, it would be imperfect, and therefore be blasted and ruined forever. These marvels of grace constitute that good work which he has but begun in those who trust him. To this much more is yet to be added, according to Philippians 1.6, he that, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until, until the day of Jesus Christ. The riches of grace are the beginning and final presentation in glory in the likeness of Christ, in the, in, in the likeness of Christ will be the, the completion. Such a final perfection and such an eternal being is the greatest divine undertaking for the one who has been lost in sin. Nothing less than this would satisfy the infinite love of God, that he might thus be free to satisfy his boundless love for us. He met all the issues of sin for a lost and ruined world. So perfectly has he wrought that man need not but believe and thus receive the bounty of his grace. It is grace reigning through righteousness, for God has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the, of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given, excuse me, or who hath first given to, to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. That's Lewis Berry Chafer, The Riches of God's Grace.
Lewis Berg Schaefer. It comes out of the book entitled Salvation, God's Marvelous Work of Grace. I've got the book right here. I've actually read this book twice, and I, I think I read it maybe, two, uh, uh, I think I, I read another half of it on, on, online. It's a great book. And I recommend everyone picking up a copy of it. It's called Salvation by Lewis Sperry Chafer. And I was basically—I just basically read all that. I didn't, you know, I, that's, that's just one chapter. There's a chapter on eternal security in here. There's a chapter on assurance. There's a ch the, the, the eternal security of the believer, chapter 11. Let's see. There's all sorts of, there's just, it's a really good book. That's all I have. The threefold message of the cross. That's chapter three. God's estimate of the lost. Chapter two. I just recommend people, you know, to, to pick up this book. <clears throat> Let me read you the preface of the book, and then I'll uh, close. This book is presented as a simple gospel message and is in no way intended to be a contribution to the theological discussion. It is evangelistic in purpose. The writer has hoped that this statement of God's saving grace may be adapted to the spiritual understanding of the unsaved, that they may grasp the way of salvation from these pages and so be led to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Of course, if you're already saved, you know, this, it's just a good reminder of what God has done for you. It is hoped as well that many who have believed may find some new consolation and upbuilding in Christ even through this brief unfolding of the saving grace of God that this book may be used of God to the eternal glory of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is the prayer of the author, Lewis Berry Chafer, October 1st, 1917. So I don't I don't very often, you know, quote from, an, from a theologian, but I will Lewis Berry Chafer because he's, um, you know, he's a, a decent theologian and he has his um, stuff down. So that's all I have. Let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to have this book and allowing me to have your, your word of God, the Bible which is where all these promises came from. Bless the listeners and help us to uh, understand the completeness we have in Christ, the moment of faith alone in Christ alone, the moment we believed on Christ for the free gift of eternal life. There's nothing wrong with the words faith and belief, and people just don't use them anymore hardly, and it's really sad. So keep us safe and bless us abundantly, and give us Godspeed, keep your hand upon us, and I ask all this in Jesus' precious name, amen.